Thank you very much. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Perfect. Cool. So about me, I'm an enterprise security consultant at Sword and Shield out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, I did win this year's DerbyCon SECTF. Um, prior to that, I navigated submarines for seven years. Um, I have certifications, sure. Um, I do write guest blogs for basically anyone who's willing to listen. Um, a few that I've written for, Alien Vault, Tripwire, ITSP. Um, I have my own blog and podcast as well at Advanced Persistent Security, and um, I tap out a lot in jiu-jitsu, so I've been training for a couple of months, but I'm nowhere near where I need to be, so uh, Helio Gracie said, you either win or you learn. I learn a lot. Um, I didn't know there were ways to bend arms and necks that way, but I felt the wrath. It's all good. Um, from that, here's a couple of pictures from the SCCTF with the trophy. So, yeah. Um, and, and we can see here I'm repping my uh, Skydog Con 7 badge uh, as the uh, county password inspector. So I'll be doing audits after the fact to make sure everyone's passwords are up to code. Um, just make sure that we meet all of the uh, requirements that we need to. So basically, we're going to talk about uh, the goals of this. I want to talk about OSINT because, honestly, without good OSINT, your social engineering is dead in the water. Uh, you have to give someone a reason to talk to you uh, or to communicate with you. We'll talk about social engineering in terms of pretexting, the various ishings. Um, to a degree, whaling. Uh, I put dumpster diving and baiting in there just for uh, referential purposes. We'll talk some applied social engineering, so how to take that OSINT and weaponize it. Um, and then, of course, the interaction. And then, time permitting, just so everybody gets something out of it, I'll touch a little bit on the mitigation perspective of it because, um, I mean, let's face it, even if you're working as a pen tester, you're working to increase the security of some organization. So uh, being able to provide good recommendations or mitigations in the report uh, will definitely take you far as well. Um, one thing that I always, uh, t that I continue to take with me from my time in the Navy is don't come, don't come to me with a problem without having a recommended solution of some sort. So that's exactly uh, what I'm going to uh, try to push here. And then with that, we have uh, the training. And it looks like my font's messed up on the next slide. Yep, it is. Anyway, I'm going to deal with it as opposed to edit it. Um, I love how font changes just come out of nowhere. Basically, social engineering is the art of human hacking. We're exploiting the human factor, and we're going to make it past all those blinky boxes that all the vendors are trying to sell you all this ridiculous stuff. Um, I don't care if you have a $5 million firewall. Um, if I can get that administrator to open a port and let me walk right in, really, you know? You could have trained that administrator for, you know, an hour's time, uh, and the problem wouldn't have happened. Uh, here's some books if you want to read up on it. Um, I mean, you can't talk social engineering without mentioning Christopher Hadnagy or Kevin Mitnick. Um, Christopher Hadnagy himself is a big fan of uh, Dr. Cialdini, and uh, something we'll see a little bit uh, later on uh, deals especially with the six principles of persuasion uh, that comes from this book. Uh, in terms of pioneers of the art, um, we have Kevin Mitnick, Dr. Cialdini, uh, Chris Hadnagy, but we also have Frank Abengale, Um and you may remember him from Catch Me If You Can. Um, you know, I always think back to the scene where he's uh, counterfeiting checks by buying the uh, toy airplanes, putting them in the bathtub so the stickers fall off so he can affix them to the check to make it look like a paycheck. So um, he was a master of impersonation and just thinking outside the box. And really, uh, those are things that uh, are vital to social engineering. So with this, the examples, we have the phishing. We all know, we've all saw the emails. We've all thought about going to UPS to get the label or Amazon's going to ship us a, a five unit rack server that you didn't even know you had an Amazon account to that email address or you're going to fly from Los Angeles to DC but you've not been in Los Angeles since like 2010. It's like, hmm, how am I getting to Los Angeles? Oh, when did Delta add that second A to their domain? Hmm. Always, it always puzzles me. Spear fishing is nothing more than focus, focused fishing. Whaling, you're going for the big fish. You're going for sea level. And oftentimes, to be honest, they're easier. Because if you can actually bypass their administrative assistant or any protective measures in between, they already have an assumed level of trust with you. They, they see it as, you've made it through all these other people. I should trust you. Um, fishing, that kind of ties in with pretexting. It's just voice fishing. Um, pretexting can be 
a number of things. It could be face-to-face -face impersonation. You know, my pretext could be, I am the county password inspector. I need to see your password and make, make sure that it meets complexity requirements. As a new requirement, uh, based uh, as of uh, late September uh, 2017, all passwords must contain some transformation of the word Trevor. <laughs> Trevor, forget. Um, baiting. I mean, throw some infected USB drives around. I'll tell you, like this time of year, if you want to do something good, everybody that has insurance through work, we're about to be dealing with um, open enrollment. So if you really want to get some people, go off and make a poster with a malicious QR code to tell them to go look at their open enrollment data and verify it's all correct. That's a good one. I, I like open enrollment. You know, uh, I'm a huge fan of pumpkin spice stuff. Uh, I've got a pumpkin spice RX bar in my room for a snack later. Um, but I've had to lay off the pumpkin spice lattes this year because of the sugar content. So unfortunately, you know, it's the nature of the beast. Um, we'll talk about some dumpster diving. I mean, in Tennessee especially, uh, since I live in Knoxville, think of it this way. If you show up in a white truck with something on the side that says waste management and a green shirt on, they're going to let you in to check on the dumpster. That's an example that Chris provides in the social engineering book. You say, hey, I'm with a waste company. Our, our truck driver said that there's a, some damage to your dumpster. I've been told that I need to go inspect it to determine if you need a new dumpster. They don't want trash to pile up, so they're going to let you inspect it. So you get in, and because you're in a white truck, you also have some room to put some goodies in the back of the truck if you so choose. And then tailgating. Um, my personal favorite, uh, depending on where you are, um, it could be Dunkin' Donuts or it could be Krispy Kreme. Get a dozen donuts, fill up one hand. Get a cup of coffee for the other. People will break their necks to let you in to think you're going to give them a donut. And if you really want to be sinister, you might be able to put something like a Wi-Fi pineapple in, in the donut uh, box or even in the coffee cup and just keep on going through. Have a, donut, a dozen donuts, a dozen doors. There you go. Um... But the reason I've got Daniel Day-Lewis here is, uh, I, I, through my research, I, he's a method actor, right? So he's basically continuously pretexting as the character for which he's getting paid to portray. When he was filming The Crucible, dude didn't bathe for three months because that was standard for that period. And I, I just hope that a majority of it was actually filmed in the colder months, but I'm going to say, based on my vague recollection of seeing it in high school, I don't think so. Um, Lincoln, for example. I lived in Richmond when they were filming Lincoln. Uh, the, the organization I worked with had their Christmas party down the street from where they were actually filming. Uh, he was on site with Sally Field, and like we kept getting in trouble. Like The whole organization kept getting in trouble for trying to sneak around and take pictures to see things, and apparently Steven Spielberg wasn't uh, too uh, happy on that topic. So, But either way, you know, he stays in character. To this day, you can go to shops in downtown Petersburg, Virginia, and they have signs saying Lincoln ate here because Daniel Day-Lewis dressed and in character as Abraham Lincoln dined there. So getting into those six principles of persuasion, to make you think about this, think of the last time you bought a car or bought anything for that matter. So we'll use the car uh, as an example, my favorite place to start. Oh, yeah, I'll, I will give you a good deal on this car, but I'll tell you what. Before we go forward, there was a guy that just looked at this about half an hour ago, and he went to the bank to get financing. If you can get your financing approved before he gets back, it's yours. That right there is hitting on number six, urgency scarcity. You don't really see authority too much in standard uh, social engineering. You see it sometimes in ransomware and in fish to try to get you to click things because they'll be like, the FBI has discovered seven pornographies on your computer. Click here to avoid criminal prosecution um, or something to that effect with other uh, broken English phrases with uh, poor spelling or traditional British spelling rather. Um, but likability, back to that car salesman. Oh yeah, man, I see you're wearing a... Uh, a Tennessee Vols shirt. You know, I used to like Alabama, but when I moved up here, man, I took a love to the Vols. Good old Rocky Top, man. Mm-hmm. I love going to watch the Vols play football at Thompson Bowling Arena. It's like, 
Yeah, me too. I thought Neyland Stadium was where they played. I thought they had like a capacity of like 102,455. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I should check Twitter and see if the if if it's been updated. But either way, they're gonna try to make themselves likable. They're gonna they're gonna try to use vernacular that akin to like how you're dressed and how you conduct yourself. If you know, if you're in, in a suit, they're probably gonna be like, sir, bend over backwards, offer you water. I mean, even at some hole in the wall used car dealership um, that rolled a odometer stock, they would probably try that. If you're in a t-shirt and jeans, they're probably gonna try to resonate with you with the working class. Oh yeah, working for the weekend, man. Slaving for the man, absolutely. Social proof, all the cool kids are doing it. You know you really want this two-seater, why? Chicks dig it. It's like, hmm, okay. Social proof. Everybody's doing it. It's peer pressure, right? You should give me your password because everybody else gave me their password. I mean, you gave me your password earlier. I mean, and it was compliant. It even had Trevor in it. I mean, it had the full Trevor T. Roach in it. It was amazing. And there was a zero in Trevor. Exactly. Got to do those substitutions. Reciprocity. You scratch your back, I'll scratch yours. You know, it's the end of the month. I'm really trying to, you know, I need to get this last sale to close out my month strong. Or my manager, he's going to be on me hot and heavy. That actually adds a little a level of authority, but not to the same uh, focus as normal. But, you know, if you'll buy this, I'll knock like another 300 bucks off. Or, you know, I'll personally pay for your license plates or something like that. It's just he's trying to get you to do something, and in return he'll do something that he believes to be of value for you. So, um, I mean, this is applicable to almost any type of sales. It doesn't matter. It could be firewall sales, TV sales, car sales. I don't know about drug sales, but I'm sure it could fit in there somewhere. Um, to apply it, basically, social engineering has two main functions. We're trying to influence the users to do one of two things. Do something or give us something. Click this link, open this firewall port, open the front door, my hands are full. What kind of, or the information, what are you using for encryption? Who is your malware protection vendor? Oh, I'm sorry, you're not the person that handles contracts? Oh, could you, could you please tell me who is? Okay, and is their extension still 5621? No, no, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it, it was 562. Three seven. Okay, thank you so much. Right there. That's all it takes. Um, or you know, tell me your password. I mean, that's giving up data. So that's basically you know, in terms of social engineering, that's the applicability of it. So with OSINT, let's let's think about this for a moment. And once we get the fundamental of the OSINT, then we'll be able to dial back and kind of wrap our head around how it works. So basically, we're taking publicly available information. Um, yeah, it can come from the dark web, but for the purpose of this, I really don't talk about that because that's outside the scope of your typical thing. Uh, if you're if you're actually doing a full-on test, you may use it, but uh, for the most part, if someone's doing it as part of a pen test, you're going to have so few hours to actually be able to go scouring the dark web and find a bunch of stuff that there's more than enough available on the regular internet, especially with social media. But we're going to go to the internet. We're going to look at mass media. We're going we're to see who's bragging about what. Um, such and such hospital has record year in sales or, I don't know, um, mortality rates. Fewer people have died at said hospital this year than they did last year. Hmm, okay. You call them up. So applying it to the social engineering. Hi, I'm with the uh, American Journal of uh, Medicine and Morbidity. Uh, I'm calling to find out some things that you may have done to find out about uh, how to uh, make your mortality rate go down. Uh, do you have just a moment? Sure. At that point, you get them talking. Oh, man, it's happy Friday. I can't wait to get out of here and have a craft brew. I used that at DerbyCon, actually, the, the lady on the other end of the phone. I, I just hit her with a happy Friday, and I was like, man, I cannot wait to get out of here. There are some craft brews calling my name. She's like, I like craft beer. I was like... It's like we're cut from the same cloth. So while I've got you on the phone, do you have a couple of minutes? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I, I've got some questions. We've got this external audit coming up. 
uh, I just need to verify this information is correct so I don't look stupid to the auditor. You know, having a big four come in here and, you know, ask us all these intrusive questions, you don't want to look stupid. I mean, we're, we're a multinational company. I mean, you know, we are the industry leaders of our vertical. Oh, yeah, I have some time for you. Okay, awesome. So uh, what kind of operating system do you have? Are you on a laptop or a desktop? Uh, can you click that uh, Windows looking button in the bottom left and type BitLocker? Hmm. Oh, thanks. You're so kind. Uh, more on that later. But anyway, specialized journals, conference proceedings, like when colleges do their conferences or IEEE or ACM, people are releasing stuff left and right. And sometimes they don't completely anonymize it. And you can find some good goodies out about that. Photos. Josh Huff, he's a huge one on the photos. Um, taking the reflection of the gas price. Uh, he presented it at last year's DerbyCon, and basically he was able to determine it was a gray Dodge Durango uh, model year 2006 to 2011, and then based on the geographic data of the photo, you could even go further and determine uh, who it could potentially belong to. Um, good old Google Maps. I mean, I love looking at Google Maps because in the SCCTF, I actually found some flags because there was a giant really boxy brown truck sitting next to a loading dock. One of the flags for the SCCTF is who do you use for shipping and deliveries? Hmm. There's only one really boxy brown truck. So finding things like that out. Or when they have an emergency dumpster put out because they're doing some sort of renovation and, and they don't completely edit out the company and you're able to get the company name and then go from there. But um, the other thing that comes with this and um, it's definitely vital. I, I learned a lot of this in the SECTF portion. Resumes. Resumes and mailing lists. Those are my favorite places from now on. Um, so I was looking across Google. Uh, I had determined that the phone number syntax was a certain way and I had the company name. So I started looking for things containing that. And I had to filter out because there was a lot of PR stuff. And there was quite a bit of stuff related to HR and just other things. So once I got all that filtered out, I found that one of their previous employees had posted uh, configuration files um, to a mailing list that it had in turn archived their entire communication structure to the internet. He didn't struggle, uh, he did not scrub his signature line out of it, so I was able to find him because the phone number syntax and the email address. So, okay, now I know they're using this for backups. I know they've had this problem at this time. Hmm. So I added his email address to my list that I was searching for using various tools such as Recon NG. I find his GitHub account. Well, he left the company, I believe, in November 2016. So I was focused more on scripts before that. Well, I was able to determine what kind of languages he was using in terms of Ruby, Golang. There's a little bit of Perl there. Found a script that they were using uh, to monitor Netflix Ice, which apparently is used for um, estimating your costs for using AWS. Uh, I confirmed that they were using AWS, uh, which I had already seen in the DNS record, but I found his Route 53 configuration file, uh, his Nagios configuration script, uh, the script that was used to poll all of the systems uh, to ensure that they're communicating with the Red Hat network to receive updates, so there's an operating system too. Um, and it just went on and on and on. And it was just hanging out. But the thing is, the company couldn't do anything to this person because He's no longer an employee. Bless you very much. And there was nothing in the scripts that actually indicated that it was with the company, but it was a reasonable assertion. Because, I mean, in this room, the number might be a little bit higher, but let's face it. How many people are using Nagios at home? Not too terribly many. Okay, in here we have one hand. There may be more, but still, that's not something you typically use at home. Red Hat, you don't typically use that at home. If you're going to use that, you're not going to pay. You're going to use CentOS or... Uh, scientific Linux, or even Fedora. So that was just to confirm things. So let's think about where we can gather it. Um, this is always ironic to me, having been on a submarine and spent a lot of time uh, on a periscope. But, I mean, that's the perfect way to uh, gather some information. Just, you know, take a deep dive in Facebook. Um, but where are some other places? Well, bars. I mean, as soon as, soon as the... Uh, truth elixir gets hits the bloodstream people are going to start talking it's like hey what kind of problems are you facing at work oh yeah you know I, i've had problems with the oracle databases myself oh you're not using oracle oh what are you using oh my sequel oh yeah similar problems though i mean 
and then just keep them talking, right? Um, malls. Uh, the best example of a mall is about this. Uh, I was in a Macy's probably, um, I'm going to say around Christmas of last year. I'm just walking around, and I hear some random guy on the phone with his bank. And uh, apparently his card's locked out. He starts reading his entire card number right there in the middle of the mall. I'm like, can you do that again, please? Okay. Well, here, since you gave me yours, let me give you mine and find out some more information. Uh, my card number is 4-8675-309-9035-7684. Let's, let's just do a swap here. You, you can use my card at the checkout. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that yours is taken care of. That inter the, me talking to the guy never happened, but that would have been a really decent pretext on that. Restaurants. Um, so there's a Thai place in Knoxville that I like to go for lunch. And uh, typically, if you're in a party of two or less, they put you in the bar area. There's this column in between uh, that has uh, like portholes. So I like to sit there and listen to what other people are talking about. I'm like, I wonder who these people work for. There was a there was a guy who completely failed. He lost out on like a million dollar contract sitting like right there. I was like, mm, this is sad. You really should talk about this stuff behind closed doors. This is terrible. Um, family and friends. Who in here does not have a social media account whatsoever? Okay. Siblings, spouse, parents, children. Do any of those? No. I think you are the unicorn. <laughs> you can control your own paranoia, but you cannot control the paranoia of others because it never fails. As much as my mom has been told, don't put pictures of me on social media. I have pictures of me on social media. I mean, I'm up here speaking in front of a camera. I'm going to be on the internet. I know this. I want to control what's going there. It's like, no, don't do this. 60% of the time, she does it every time. And I started sticking my middle finger up to see if that would stop it. Nope. So, it doesn't work. But anyway, family and friends, you can't control what others post about you. And there's still the correlation. Even though you don't have a Facebook account, Facebook can still figure out who you are. They can still find out how to market to you. Um, back windshields, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, Forums, job boards, search engines, social media, you know, your standard, the repeat offenders. So when we talk about OSINT, we've got to think about the goals of OSINT. And, you know, I, I've rehearsed saying this. It's like, Ermagerd, collector of the dirter. That took me a long time. It, it was well practiced. But anyway, you have to do that. And you don't want to be like the underpants gnomes. You know, they're like, step one, collect the underpants. Step two, step three, profit. So when we talk about this in the OSINT sense, it's like step one, collect the OSINT. Step two, step three, world domination. Well, there's this whole giant step two that you're missing. So you have to figure out how to make this relatable, how to actually get the data that you need and how to weaponize it. And then once weaponized, then world domination may come. So here's one of my favorites. What can we ascertain here? Well, dad, uh, could be. So dad, he, he's flexing some muscles. Chances are he's got a dad bod. Chances are he might go to the gym and like, when he works out, workout equipment needs icy hot. Probably. In his own mind. But anyway, if you start talking, to, chatting him up about some protein powder or some gut busting exercises, you got rapport with him. With mom, she's a teacher. I guarantee if you send her an email to her work email offering some sort of grant or funding, she'll probably click it. John, he plays sports. He probably He's probably out of the house a lot playing sports. Mom is out of the house teaching. So with that, if anyone ever decided they wanted to break into a home, you now have your timelines too. Neil, I mean, just get a pair of airwalks and a thrasher shirt. You can resonate with him talk about some punk rock, open him up to some old school casualty punk rock, or be like, hey man, have you ever heard of the Misfits? Something to that effect. Jessica is the curveball. I can't tell if she's old enough to really take care of herself unattended. So she may have an after school program, a daycare, or she may be home alone. Who knows? 
Beaker and Ruby are definitely the curveballs because we don't know what kind of dogs they are. Ruby looks like a hound and hounds bark, so if you're going to try to break in, I wouldn't do it. Um, here's some more that I found. Um, so with this one, uh, we've got a Navy Dad here. Um, they appear to be a very weird family because I always thought that the parents were supposed to be to the far left. So I'm not sure how this works, but they, they do appear very fertile. Um, and then we can see in the bottom left, they also take part in Iron Man. So that's the significance of the 70.3 and 140.6. So here's the thing. If there's an Iron Man going on in the local area, you can always offer them a coupon code. Who doesn't like coupon codes? I mean, I smeared my coupon code for Hacker Halted all over creation three times over. And people used it. Over 200 people used it. They got in free, though. I mean, it was a legit one. The bonus? Uh, what bonus? There was no payload. Like, literally, your, your, your payload was free admission to Hacker Halted. Brian can attest to this. Um, but anyway, give them a coupon code or um, talk about a Navy parents meetup. That's always a good way, right? This one, I, I don't know where to start with this one. This was, uh, I got behind this car in a drive-thru. Um, I could tell they're pretty nerdy and they seem to be very adventurous. They have a lot of things about hiking, but they also have a lot of Gandalf references. So, um, I guess some targeted advertisement dealing with nice hiking canes might work. But with this one, I really couldn't get a good one on it. Um, this one, I don't think I would try to fish them because their T-Rex might try to eat you. And if we learned anything from Jurassic Park, you, it is not safe to hide in the bathroom. So with all of this, what do we have to consider? Timing. We can't talk timing without talking flavor of play, right? Um, so with this, take your time. You don't have to be going at 5,000 miles an hour. During the SECTF, in the OSINT portion, you have three weeks to collect everything and get your report together. Even for a Fortune 500 company, I, there are so many things I didn't get. Um, but when we're looking at it from the purpose of reality and from the eyes of a pen tester, uh, for example, I've got a phishing engagement coming up and I have 15 hours allocated to call 25 numbers. So there's not going to be a whole lot of OSINT there. Uh, there's going to be some, but not a whole lot. But at the same time, I'm not trying to find out everything about the company. I just need to find something about each person I'm calling so that I can get them to start talking. But um, with that, when you're trying to collect information, when you've got the time to do it, go through, refine what you're seeing. You might find something late in the game, like that person that's on the mailing list that has the GitHub account. I restarted so many things after I found that, and it uncovered more because I was taking my time. Um, but again, from the eyes of a pen tester, be cautious because you do have your limits. Um, and then how do things work together? It, it deals with human psychology, right? So people want to generally be nice people, right? People typically don't enjoy just being obtuse. Yes, some do, and some are trolls, and that's perfectly acceptable, but that's the reason that things exist. People like to overshare. And you can collect information from them by that manner or just a little tickle of the ego. That's all it takes. Um, you use the OSINT to build the dossier that you need. So if you need to impersonate someone to get in somewhere, you need to use that OSINT to find out what they're looking for. Um, you know, to stay as unpolitical as possible, if you're trying to use a catfishing style ruse of something to the effect of sexual attraction to get close to someone to be able to get into their organization, you probably want to make sure that they are swinging the way that you're pushing. You probably, you probably don't want to, you know, try to come across as Fabio to a woman who's interested in women. Just saying. Be cautious of these things because you need to appeal to people. To some degree, OSINT can be used for attribution. The tool Onion Scan can actually assist with that. Beyond that, I mean, we know the fuzz uses it. There's a guy in my hometown. He was, um, forget the term. He was uh, an herbal botanist. 
had lots of pictures of a green leafy substance on his Facebook as his profile, not his profile picture, his cover photo, which is also automatically public. Almost every cop in my hometown has a Facebook, and that's what they use it for. Then he was bragging about making a transaction to, um, I think her name is Chanel West Coast, off of uh, Ridiculousness. It's like, okay, well, now you've just publicly admitted that you're an unlicensed pharmacist. Hmm. We have this newspaper that comes out every day. We, every, the, the nickname is The Smut Sheet. Yep, his name was in it. Position with the intent of resale. Hmm, surprise. Sales and retail, right? Going back to that car salesman. I don't know what's up with this tire, but this tire is better than any tire ever. This must be a Donald Trump tire. It is huge. And I don't know what these metrics are, but I don't think they're buying it. I hope, I hope his ruse is that he's ignorant and he's actually trying to say something incorrect to get them to correct him. Because that's another way you can go. People like to correct each other, not because they just want to be like, oh, I know more than you. It's like, no, if you're talking about something, you need to be correct. And it's an easy way to do it. Um, this plays into big data. I mean, Urban Outfitters got in trouble because they were asking for zip codes, and then all of a sudden people started receiving written marketing materials in their mailbox because they had shopped there. Uh, we can't forget about Target, not that part of Target, but the part of Target where a young lady was shopping at Target using a rewards card, and uh, she was outed as pregnant. She didn't even know it, all because her shopping habits changed and her dad checked the mail. It's like, why are you getting ads for baby food, diapers, and strollers? Hmm. Anyway, let's take a look at some more examples. So I think this is uh, it's either sleepy or grumpy, but again, we have another fairly fertile family over here. Um, we can tell they're conservative um, by the In God We Trust here, and then it is a Tennessee plate, but this is in eastern Tennessee, so uh, there's definitely a higher probability of them being conservative being in eastern Tennessee than in middle or west. Uh, so that gives, them some, gives us something to talk about. Uh, this rack is on the van in front of them, so it's not them, but that gives us something to talk about. Hey, do you want a Disney vacation? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Disney's going to be doing something next year called Gospel Week or something to that effect. Just something to get them to be like, hey, I want to click this. I want to know more. So with this one, this is the Murica Mobile. When this thing hits 95 on the interstate, bald eagles shoot out of the tires and take it off the ground. This is on Murfreesboro Road, my friend. And I'm not too familiar with this area, but I know where Murfreesboro is, and I know Murfreesboro Road is not too far from here. So we could take, if you'd like, we can take a look at the intersection later. So with that being said, this is the Murica Mobile. I can just about guarantee you, you're going to have one of two profiles in this car. You're going to have an absolute jokester, or you're going to have like the kind of person who claims that President Obama barbecued bald eagles in the White House birdbath. <laughs> It's going to be one of the two. There's not much in, there's not, let's face it, there's no in between here. They're either going to get out with like an American flag cape and like everything that people who are like, that violates the flag code will just like absolutely lose their mind over or, yeah. And the irony of this is this is the Murica Mobile, but it's a Toyota Camry. <laughs> it can't even be a Nissan. I mean, once and done, I've kind of already touched on this. So is it once and done? No, you need several rounds. Refine the information you have. You know, go back with it. When you're collecting, consider this. What is the end game? What are you trying to do with this? How are you going to store it? How long do you need to store it? Do you have an ethical obligation to store it in a specific manner or act upon it in a specific manner? Like, for example, Christopher Hadnagy has his, uh, um, um, his nonprofit, right? The Innocent Lives Foundation. You have an ethical, uh, an ethical obligation to report certain things you find via OSINT or social engineering because the people that you're working against are believed to be child predators. How do you protect it? You know, let's not be like the underwear gnomes. So give me just a moment here. And we've got a little, we've got, we've got some demo city going on here. 
because we all like demos if this loads here. Oh, there it is. So let me change my screen up here. So here we have one of my new favorite toys. This is called the Facebook Live Map. Anybody here familiar with this? I know a few people are. All right, so I like to look for makeup tutorials. Those are always my favorite. So let's see what we can find here. Let's zoom in a little bit. My internet speed's a little bit slow coming through my phone, but everything that's here, is, this is all people who are publicly on Facebook Live. Okay, so this is an organization. We won't go for that. I like to go for people with this. This might be good. So what we're going to do is we're going to open this in a new tab. And that's where, yes. So right here we have the video ID, right? So we're going to go here to Michael Basil's website. We're going to go here to Tools. Um, and for whatever reason, this isn't wanting to show up. Ah, here it is. I think that Windows update that came on my computer messed up my resolution or something to that effect. No, it's still not there. Just waiting for it to load. My apologies. But anyway, you're going to click Facebook here. Once it connects and loads, um, we're going we're gonna to see some, some data. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to go here to video data. We're going to look at all the video data. And this right here, it's just going to look like some script vomited all over the screen because that's quite literally what's about to happen. And hopefully this person is still live by the time this loads. But... Either way, we're going to run this, and then uh, from there, all right, here we go. So as I said, someone just vomited all over the place, right? So we'll just do a Control-F. Okay, it's not there. So let's find us a new one. Find one with a little bit bigger dot. Hmm, what's here? Oh, looks like a makeup tutorial. I don't mind if I do. Oh, just updated. Hang on. Hopefully this one will work. <sighs> eh, we'll see what this is. Why not? I mean, the, the key to OSIN is you've got to realize you've got to be nosy. So, oh, we got 27 people watching. This is good, too. wonder where they are. What's that? I think so. But hey, look right here. We have a match for video ID. What's this? Lat and long? You've got to be kidding me. What's happening here? So then we just stroll over here to our friend, Google Maps, right? I, I mentioned how friendly we were with Google Maps a, a moment ago. And now we have this, so we just... I don't know, we just drop this here in here, get a little bit of this. And we'll go here. I wonder where they are. Maybe we'll find out. Huh? I think so. In the meantime, when this portion's finishing up, does anyone have any questions in the interim? No? Cool. All right, so they are here. Well, you know what? I want to be a little bit nosier than that. Because we can already tell this is probably a residential area. Um, and let's just see. I don't know if my bandwidth is good enough to find this part out, but we can always drop the little street view in. I always want to do that, too. Anytime I'm, like, snooping around and I see somebody on Facebook Live and I do this, I always just want to take a screenshot of the outside of the building they're in and post it in the comment section. <laughs> but the thing about it is, hey, I don't, I don't profess to be otherwise, but the thing, the thing about it is, I mean, well, or is it? I mean, I might have more than one account. Just saying. 
I've not tried. I've not tried that aspect, and I've not tried the aspect of if they're using a VPN. So that's something I would definitely be interested in knowing. So I guess there is no street view for this street. Hey, there's John's concert hall, though, John McAfee's. But nevertheless, we can go that route. So the blue dots where? Transit stations. Yep. Um, it won't let you get that close. You could almost, you, with Google Street View, though, you can get it almost down to an address. And then you can go back to Michael Basil's website and actually confirm using other tools, or you could just go straight to people, P I P L dot com, um, Family Tree Now, or uh, True People Search. Those are probably my three favorite uh, people search engines from the OSINT stack coming from there. Um, with Google, I mean, we'll just take uh, Nissan, for example, and we're going to say, um, just give it a good search here. So what are we going to find here? Oh look, phone numbers. And I just use Nissan because they're down the street. I have nothing against Nissan. Uh, but right here, Nissan Corporate Info, there's a phone number to call them. Uh, internet sales right here. And let's just uh, go ahead and go a step further with this and take the word dealer off. Hmm, that didn't work. So, hmm. Either way, we can keep going. Oh, let's do this. Let's add, if I could type today, file type PDF, and I still can't type today. It's okay. After some Don Julio later, I'll be able to type very well. I will type better than anyone. So right, right here now, we have the Sports Car Club of America. One Nissan Way, Franklin, Tennessee. There's a phone number. Service contract. Ooh, here's a point of contact for that as well. So once you find out PR's phone number, if their extension, for example, might be 8311, you just throw a minus 8311 in there, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Same thing with HR. When you find something you don't want to see anymore, it's just it's ba it's you know quasi basic or advanced Google searching. It's Google hacking, really, in the, in the regard that you can refine things. So. Uh, the things I want to take that I want to tell you to take away from this uh, very simply uh, would just be to uh, ensure that uh, you're making meaningful use of what you're working with, and that um, don't get discouraged with things. Uh, things aren't going to work out perfect every time. Um, and my PowerPoint's not wanting to work anymore, so let me get back here. Uh, oh no, no HDMI. Maybe. There we go. It's a fast forward button. Just in the interest of time. So if you want to contact me, here's my contact information. Uh, future speaking engagements, I'm going to be at LASCON. Uh, it's uh, the 26th and 27th in Austin, Texas. Um, I'll be at B-Sides Charleston. I'm doing a four-hour workshop on OSINT and social engineering there. Uh, I'm going to be speaking uh, or actually doing a workshop at Sector in Toronto with Marcel here in the back. Uh, and then uh, Atlanta ISSA afterwards. Um, but again, if you want to contact me, here's how. Uh, if you're interested in contacting Sword and Shield, there's their contact information as well. Uh, if you want any further information, uh, you can get me after uh, the presentation is over. Um, and in the meantime, with the remaining, like, probably 75 seconds I have, any questions? All right. Thanks. Been great.